I think probably he was. And it was he was out there saying, come to the gay rape, come to the gay rape. He was like, you know, no, 20. And there was a young black man watching him, very serious, and very serious, and watching, watching. And the guy's handing him out. And finally, the, the young black man grabs one of the things and he reads him. He reads really close and he says, hey, 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 man. And, and the white guy says, yeah. Any bitches up in here? <laughs> <laughs> and the white guy smiles. And he goes, no, brother. Just us niggas. The now, white guy said that. Yeah. Right. And, like, and the and black guy went, all right. You know? And so so, like, so more, more or less now is like used as a term of endearment. Well, it depends on who it is. I mean, right, it depends right, on right. where you are. The language, like, the language changes in all kinds of places. Right, right. I know a lot of people. Man, Bill Cosby heard that. He'd be really upset yeah. if they said it. But they aren't talking to Bill Cosby. So, like, the thing is, is that, you know, like, and they were talking to me. You know, I can't come and say, well, no, you're not treating women correctly. There's a conversation between them, too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I think that prior, like, you know, I mean, I mean, what he did is he did, took the whole range of us discussing it, you know. And I don't think we could be where we are without Richard, you know. Uh, actually, I don't think we could be where we are without Richard. Yeah. Yeah. I know for sure I wouldn't be. Then when I was growing up, there was no filter. So I heard that. Yeah. I heard that since I was little. There was no filter. Tracy, go play. It was nigga go in that fucking room. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I heard. You can't be mad at me because I don't have a creek or a pond running through my backyard. <laughs> I mean, yes, I do it, God. If I sound promiscuous on stage, that's because where that's where I'm, I'm from. Ain't no money in the ghetto. All we got is each other. So we gotta do that shit to feel human. You know, in the ghetto, we have babies early. Because we use sex as a sedative. It eases the pain of poverty. You know what I'm saying? You broke, I'm broke. Let's go have one a baby. You can't get no food stamps for that puppy, even though it's cute. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get some money. I mean, the puppy with the food stamps. That puppy gonna eat what we eat. Cheese, milk, you know, they give you a whip. You want some of my dog? <laughs> so, you know, when I'm, when I'm on stage, you know, like you said, there's a conversation with me and my audience. And, and at that moment, there's electricity, and there's love in the room and all that, and they know what I'm feeling, they know what I'm getting at. You know what I'm saying? To me, when somebody comes to my show with a tent, you know, you see the, the name of the tour is, excuse my French, and there's a disclaimer. I took every precaution, but then you come to my show, and you blog something out about me, that's not true. Like Briss said, if you want to see me, see me with your, your heart and not your eyes, because that's not how I am. You know, that's not, that's me in character. I'm trying to show the world our fears. That's what Archie Bunker was about. That's what George Jefferson was about. We made, back then, we made fun of our bigotry and all that stuff, our foolishness, the foolishness. But now I just think the PC is killing comedy. There's this moment in the documentary where Pryor goes on to NBC and, and they're censoring everything he does. I mean, how does that compare to your experience with them in the last decade doing doing a big show? Richard was different, man. Richard was his situation was different than mine. Mm -hmm. You know, mine is. A, I, I, if I had ten minutes, I could just sit down and, and just think about that question you just asked me. Because I had to fight too. You know, he was the executive producer and all that. I don't know, man. I I, I don't know, man. That's, that's a heavy question. <laughs> but I'll be was... honest with you guys, and that's another thing I learned from Richard. I'll be honest, he was always honest with us. Even when he was on fire, he did the joke with the mat. That's honesty for your ass, man. So when the stand-up is up there, if you're coming from the, the open wound technique, which is, I'm a, listen, give me that knife, laugh at this. You think you got problems, laugh at this. But when I get on stage, I got to go by myself, and I got to stitch this room up. And I gotta lick it. I can't even really be around people after I perform, but sometimes people can be salty. And, and you have to medicate it. And, uh, no, uh huh? And you have to medicate it. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, but that's one thing that I, when I read Prior Convictions, yeah. he realized he didn't have to do that. Yeah. At the end, he realized that. And that's where the young stand ups coming up behind him. You know, I've been clean seven years now. That's okay. my surprise. And I realize I'm funnier. And I get to see the whole day. <laughs> I mean, my, my, my children, their childhood was a blur. You know, me, I, was, I remember one time I, got, I was living out there. Martin Lawrence told me, you, know, you think you get in trouble in, in New York. You come to L.A. as a different beast. And I believe I'm a New Yorker. We ain't scared of that. And I got out there before, you know, as a full-blown alcoholic. I came 
came home drunk one night and there was no toilet paper in the bathroom. So I pooped in the kitty litter. <laughs> and my wife said, who the hell did this? My, my cat name was Snowball. I said, Snowball did it. <laughs> and she said, Snowball must be a fucking mountain lion. <laughs> and I was in my marriage. And I realized what I lost. <laughs> But you know, anyway, you know, about that show, about that show, it was it was one of the best shows ever on television, and and it, and there's a reflection of it because Harry Belafonte had a show many years before, and the same thing happened to Harry. They they came to Harry and they said, look, uh, you can have all black singers or all Mexican singers, or all white singers, but you can't mix them up because we got people down in the south looking at, at the show. And and Harry said, well, take my show off, off the air. And and Richard was doing the same thing. The show was a great show. I used to love. It. I was so sad when they took it off, even though I know he wanted it. It was a beautiful show. Now, Jennifer, many of the characters that Pryor portrayed on his show and in movies, obviously not exactly politically correct. Do you think that there was a cost to this, um, to, to him psychologically? A after he came back from Africa, um, and we see this in the movie, he was very sort of troubled by these, the N-word and this brand of humor. Did you have a sense of that before the trip? Sure, I mean, he had this huge moment. such celebrity also and the pressure of all of that, right? And his work and topping of his own work and, and all that. But 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 the burden came from people wanting a voice. Like King was dead, Malcolm X was dead, um, Edgar Edwards was shot. I mean everybody, all the voices, all the strong, loud, good voices who spoke for the community and and for humanity, um, were dead. So you know it's Richard, you're our next exactly. So Richard, you're our next voice. But he did did, but he didn't want that kind of moniker, that kind of official jacket that but they he, wanted to put did. on him. Well, you're right, but he didn't want to be boxed in and, and he wanted to do it his way. He right. wanted to do it his way with, without any sort of boundaries, and, and, and comedy is the perfect place to do that, but he didn't want to, you know, become a, you know, a spokesman, as it were. Was that kind of sort of like connected to some of the beef that him and Jim Brown had? Ooh, yeah. Yeah, well, Jim was just kind of an idiot. I mean, sorry, but, but Jim just didn't know how to run a business. And Jim was so, you know, entrenched in everybody has to be black. Everybody has to be black, even if they're idiots. They have to be, you know, in the company, everybody has to be a black person. And it destroyed the company. I mean, you know, sometimes maybe, you know, the most qualified people, you know, aren't African American. And, you know, I mean, yes, go, go try to find that. But if you don't find it, you know, get the best, get the best of the best. And he could, didn't know how to run a business. And when Richard fired him, it was, it was ugly, but it was, uh, yeah. Well, that's sort of turning to the question you asked me about NBC. You know, um, <laughs> it, what, what is business, you know what I'm saying? And some of the people that I work with are good to me. And then there's some black people that treated me real bad. So, you know, I just transcended it. If you love me, I love you back. I'm trying to transcend all of that. You know, funny is funny to me. I don't look at it as black comedy. A white comedy. Yeah. Comedy is comedy, man. Richard Pryor articulated that to everybody. You could have been, not even, you could be from China, and you see him do comedy and just laugh, not even speaking no English. And that's what I'm trying to get with it, man. I'm trying to, I'm trying to bring back to the game when he took with him. You know, I'm searching for Bobby Fischer. <laughs> I know when I perform, I'm going to lose some people. <laughs> <laughs>